Now, the fact that you'll turn into an animal if you fail to fall in love with someone during your stay here is not something that should upset you or get you down. Just think as an animal, you'll have a second chance to find a companion. But even then, you must be careful. You need to choose a companion that is a similar type of animal to you. A wolf and a penguin could never live together, nor could a camel and a hippopotamus. That would be absurd. Think about it. It's not a rock. It's a rock a lobster. lobster. Right. Right. Let's, <clears throat> shall we take a crack at this? Let's let's take a crack at it at least. Let's do our best. Oh, free roam water. Yeah, it's the only kind we have. It's the only stuff we drink. Hey, we know you. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Life Lessons in Film. Today we're going to be making sense of life through the lobster mm -hmm. as best as humanly possible. possible. <laughs> Bit of an otter film. But yes, I think yeah. there's some truth to it. So it takes place in a uh, dystopian world, future perhaps? perhaps not dissimilar from our own. Perhaps not. So this takes place in a dystopian future right. where being single is not allowed. No. People who are single are not allowed to live in the city. Mm -hmm. That's what we know. So I'm imagining there's another place outside of the city, the rules, yeah. where the singles are relegated to mm -hmm. in the hopes of them finding love. If you're single, you go to a hotel in the country and you stay there for 45 days. The hope is you will find love. If you find a partner, they put you in a room for... You get two weeks in the bed. And <laughs> yeah. A nice part the hotel then you get two more weeks on the yacht. On a yacht. So that's how it works and then after if you don't find a match you get turned into an animal of your choice. Because they're humane. The whole time you're in a hotel you're not allowed to do things. There's insane rules. You're not allowed to. Lobster. Yeah. Oh, wait can we say that on YouTube? We can't say that. You're not allowed, not allowed to, to be handsy to with yourself. Have a to flame with your thing. No bean flicking. Um, yeah. No, no bean <laughs> flicking. The hotel staff however titillates Mm -hmm. and teases you yeah. and you're never allowed to actually get to the point of release mm -hmm. so that you crave a partner mm -hmm. so this is supposed to actually encourage you to find a partner yeah. if you want to extend the time you stay there so that you don't get turned into an animal you then are given the chance to shoot people mm -hmm. loners mm -hmm. the singletons who made yeah. the choice to run away from the hotel yeah. and go live in the wild mm -hmm. in the woods near the hotel because they didn't want to get turned into animals the more loners you shoot the more time you get on um, at the hotel the more time you can get to find love yeah. so the main character who is played by Colin, Colin Farrell. Farrell goes to the hotel because his wife has left him. He's a singleton, cannot live in the city, and he has to go find someone there. Mm -hmm. And he goes there with his brother who has been turned into a dog yeah. because he was single. Yeah. Bad brother. Mm -hmm. So the story just basically follows him trying to find love and yeah. all the other people there. The way that people are matched in this dystopian world mm -hmm. is by traits that yeah. they share. <laughs> I think we are a match. Yes, I think so too. So that's why he pretends to be a sociopath, yeah. just like a friend of his pretends that he also has nosebleeds, like another woman yeah. in the hotel, and that's how they are matched. Yeah. Is it coming out? No. In this world, not just the hotel. Yeah. Oh yeah, because uh, thinking about it now, it's like the whole world, because then uh, when he runs away from the hotel, he finds the loners, and periodically the, the supple, a couple of the loners will go into the city, pretend that they have couples so that they're not arrested, and so the one loner, the leader of the loners can hang out, with, can visit her parents, who both play classical guitar. And I really yeah. made that connection, but I'm like, oh, they also, that's their thing. Their they connection is they that. They both play guitar, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's so much stuff to tie. like, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> the whole trait thing, it is the bare minimum of what people need in yeah. order to be said to be compatible. Okay, you have brown eyes. Well, I have brown <laughs> yeah. eyes. Let's have a go at this love thing. Yeah, I would argue that a lot of people actually kind of approach dating and love that way. It's an exaggerated version, so 
that's what dystopian yeah. movies do is they always exaggerate conditions that the world already has. So yeah. you can take like the dating app thing and just yeah. kind of exaggerate it. So because, you know, people are kind of scrolling super quickly being like, ah, not my type, not my type. I don't know. Oh, they like one. They like the one same man. artist that I like. Okay, well, then I'm going to swipe right because then maybe we can date. Exactly. I mean, people do judge stuff on that. So they're just exaggerating it to like, oh, I have a limp. I need to find someone with a limp. That's yeah. the only then we can be compatible. You yeah. Know? If you like movies. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, I that's love. what people would put down there. Very yeah. general stuff because they're just like, I like, I, I, I like movies too. Movie. Yeah. But then you see you the You like walking in the woods? I like walking. So when I see parts of the movie, like even where they have their award ceremony for people that find a suitable mate and they're all like, we're happy for you. You know, everything is so monotone and everything because everyone is so disconnected and that's kind of the yeah. whole to emphasize just how meaningless any of this connecting actually is and, and finding love basically, how meaningless and how non-true it actually is happening. I think the whole kind of hotel institution kind of just resembles society in a way, you are penalized for being single, right? People don't mm -hmm. take you as seriously. You don't have as much clout. It's like a status thing, a respect thing. People see you differently if you're in a relationship versus single. Yeah, like they take you more seriously. Like, single. Yeah. What I like about this movie is, I think some movies, I think you could say they're some pretty obvious metaphors. That doesn't mean they're bad metaphors, but they're obvious metaphors. This one... It's pretty up to interpretation, but that's what's mm -hmm. fun about it is I'm like, maybe they didn't actually intend for this in the movie, but I still kind of, it m makes me think of certain things like during the award ceremony, how if you get into a relationship and everyone else who's still single, right, they're all on the hunt. Yeah. They're all every day desperately trying to, time is running out. Everyone feels that clock, you know, all their friends are starting to get yeah. into relationships oh and you're feeling that pressure. <laughs> and you're and still awful. single and like, it's awful and, yeah. and everyone feels that pressure so when you see your friends they get into a relationship and they're like yeah we're really happy we're clearly very suitable for each other and everyone's clapping and they're like we're so happy for you here's an award but a lot of people aren't actually happy for them so i went to girl school because my parents don't love me <laughs> the way that things were set up we'd have socials so that we'd meet boys mm. from boy schools right right and then for valentine's day we'd all go to the assembly hall the boys from the different schools would send flowers over to the girl school the nuns would read out who's ever the flower was meant for you know that the rose was coming <laughs> so the, sometimes you just have to wait for longer yeah the best rose the take longer <laughs> to come around <laughs> best isn't, it, take longer to bloom. isn't it yes. yes we were super young teens and as much as nobody said you gotta start dating but society's already, already grooming you for the idea of you needing to find a suitor just because you're at a girl's school yeah you can't be out here yeah be, lollygagging yeah, yeah being a single you still got to get on that dating yeah you, you gotta start they're separating you so you don't get distracted yeah from boys but you still have to but be distracted by, by, by boys. boys obviously it's not everybody who went to girl school and had those kinds of experiences but i feel like if you went to school co-ed whatever you are having those kinds of experiences right. all the time yeah. the way that this is all set up it takes the meaning out of love the thing that makes love special the thing mm -hmm. that makes you actually want to fall in love society just the way that it pushes you into it and the mm -hmm. way that it forces you into mm -hmm. it and creates these kinds of uh, who the devil, who the that devil? Be? <laughs> society grooms you from a very young age yes. that you need to get your act together and find a suitor i do understand the value in finding a partner and then obviously communally there's that biological need for us to populate right mm -hmm. like so by that thinking then you have to actually kind of have babies so yeah. that this community doesn't yeah kind of fizzle yeah. out right yeah um so i get that but at the same time i feel like the obsession with getting people to find each other is so incessant that we have strayed i feel so far from allowing things to happen organically mm -hmm. that's a big part of the theme is, is people feeling that pressure like the guy that hit the one friend he's the first one to find a mate but he's been faking his nosebleeds which is another thing that people a lot of times do they will change themselves they will adopt a whole new personality or look or, or face. face or all these kinds of things values about themselves because they think that would make them more compatible with someone they would like to be with and of course inevitably a lot of times that falls apart but people don't think about that they just like yeah. i want to be in a relationship that's the person i have deemed that i want yeah i've, de yeah. I've decided so I I think, now I have to figure out a way to seem compatible. Yeah, and I feel like this movie speaks to the superficiality of that. I remember I told you about this one guy who was like, you're the perfect height for me. Look at us, look at us, we look good together. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And I'm just like, what? Height? I was just perfectly short and he was perfectly tall. 
there is also that element of mystery to love where you're drawn to someone without really yeah. understanding why it is that you're drawn to them. And then when you're in the relationship, you actually realize that, oh, this is why, yeah. you know? Yeah. So in this whole movie, that's where this, the, the leader of the loners decides to strip the woman that David falls in love with, mm -hmm. right? Because they their compatibility was that they had they were both short-sighted. Right. And so she decides, I'm going to blind her, go, right. takes her to a doctor, and then strips her of her eyesight. Right. And so now you don't have any comp compatibility, right. which she's a misery loves company type yeah. of person. Yeah. Those people who are consoled only if other people are as downtrodden as yeah. they are. And yeah. I will drag you into my hell yeah. and never let you mm -hmm. win because <laughs> I don't want to be lonely in my misery. Mm -hmm. Funny why she's the leader of the loners. The ultimate yeah. loner. The ultimate loner, right? right? Yeah. Her doing that is also really like, like a tangible platform for discussion, right? Because mm -hmm. it's kind of like, if you removed certain things with your yeah. partner, right. you know, that you like right. the same with kind you. of movies, if you like, if you're, you're both pretty right. in the mainstream sense, right. you know what I mean? Would you still be compatible? Would you still be, be compatible? That's a good question. Do you know what I mean? Those That's are the kinds question. of questions. So if you are in a relationship right now, have a chat yeah. <laughs> about... If, if one of you went blind, would it still work? Yeah, would it still <laughs> work? If I, like, if you, if yeah. one of you wasn't as attractive, yeah. would you, would you would still you be interested? Would you stab your eyes out? Yeah. yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. David in the end decides he's going to, you know, gouge yeah. his eyes out or however he's going to blind himself yeah. so that they're compatible in this world yeah. that requires you to be superficially, yeah. physically compatible, yeah. right? Yeah. So he, he decides to do that, but we never see whether or not he does no, it. That's true. I forgot that they, don't, they actually leave that up, so maybe he doesn't. So that's kind of like, how far do you go to keep these compatibilities with your friends? It's kind of like maybe how much you fight to, if, if you start to grow apart in different ways or start to develop in different ways with your person, like, uh, with your partner. Partner. How much do you fight and how much do you just accept, oh, we've become different people and now this person changed ideologies. This person has now gotten into a rabbit hole of totally different way of thinking and now we don't feel yeah. compatible anymore. Yeah. Like, how much do you join them in that or do you just say, I guess they're a different person now, tapping out? Yeah. yeah. That was the first time I saw him. He was hiding behind a tree close to mine. He seemed quite presentable. The next day in the city, he found out that I was short-sighted too. There was that whole kind of love at yeah. first sight You're thing. Right. Yeah. And so their relationship felt much more organic. In my mind, there's the chance that he would, he could have done that because he's doing that for that special part of love. The inexplicable thing that draws us to love, yeah. the thing that will make you gouge your eyes out. Yeah. So there's that, but there's your view as well that maybe he, he just didn't. Yeah, I mean, it's they, they, they like the rest of the movie, it's, a, you know, they kind of leave it up to you for to a little decide, bit. But yeah. I, I feel like he probably did. Yeah, I mean, well, also the whole thing that, that makes me think of like the loner camp makes me kind of feel like why the two main characters relationship is actually more genuine than anything else you see in the movie is because it's maybe that philosophy of you first need to be comfortable alone before you can actually be in a, in a good relationship, <laughs> right? So all these people that are rushing these relationships, just forcing it, you got 45 days, they're doing all these things, right? They're they're trying to meet people in all kinds of ways. And, and you know, like, because they have this whole resort. So they play golf and try and meet people that way. They do these other activities and try yeah. to meet people that way, dances. And, and they're trying all these different activities to just find someone where they have, like, hey, you kind of find me attractive, find you attractive, boom, let's get married. Have some kids. And maybe that will kind of distract us from us actually not being that compatible where we kind of rush things. So which is kids, exactly which is the thing, people right? Do. Which is literally what people, let's yeah. have a baby. Yeah. Which in the movie, right? Yeah. They're like, okay, well, if you're fighting, we're yeah. going to throw in a we'll kid. Give you some kids. That, yeah. that usually fixes yeah. things, yeah. right? Like, that's <laughs> another point on the fact that a lot of people yeah. our marriage is just you know I don't know yeah. the course of your relationship will be monitored closely by our staff and by me personally if you encounter any problems any tensions any arguing that you cannot resolve yourselves you will be assigned children that usually helps a lot I don't want to give up this thing now that people see us as together. They yeah. see me differently now and I like them seeing me this way. So I want to maintain that. So yeah. let's have a kid to so maybe that can kind of... Yeah, let's have a know, baby and then that'll bring us together. Bring us together yeah. or it'll distract us or something, yeah. you know? Yeah. They yeah. both the found themselves as loners, accepting that that was the lifestyle they'd rather take. So I kind of look at that as the, the philosophy of, which I, I feel like generally is true, is like first you have to be okay with being on your own so that you get a sense of yourself, who you are at your core, yeah. and then you can meet someone who's in a similar situation. Sometimes being single is the best thing, mm -hmm. especially when you're in a bad relationship. Everybody in this world is in yeah. a bad relationship because they're like, well, it's that or I'm going to be an animal. Yeah, yeah. It's very rare yeah. that you're finding actual love. Yeah, I think someone asks David, the main character at one point, it's like, so what, you know, how is it? And he's like, oh, I like it. I like being a loner. It's really nice to be on your own. There's no one tying you down. You listen to music whenever you like. You masturbate whenever you want. Go for walks whenever you like. Have a chat whenever you like. I don't miss companionship at all. 
I just miss you, because you were my one true friend. Are you going to shoot me? I'm afraid so. But there's also a lot of rules that come with being in this loner camp. You can't really talk to anyone in a flirty way. There's repercussions. There's, uh, you'll get punished. Yeah, you you're, not, you're not allowed to fall in love. Not allowed to fall in love. Not allowed to You're not allowed to touch. Yeah. yeah. No, and, and so it, it could kind of symbolize um, where you think, oh, we should go the exact the, the other direction because this thing is not working. And then you find out, oh, that isn't necessarily the solution. Yeah. Whether it's like a system of people organizing, living in a certain way versus another way, but also just looking at single life versus like couplehood. Uh, is that there are upsides and downsides to both too. Yeah. It's like, yeah, in some ways you have more freedom being single, but then in other ways you don't. And then the loner leader who eventually uh, is envious of the two loners finding love, genuine love, blinds the, the woman, Rachel Wise's character. It reminds me just of a lot of people that are like, no, I like being a loner. Then they one see other friend, people, one of their yeah. friends actually then decides Gets to die. That they like, challenges their convictions, I yeah. guess, and those things. And yeah. And in a do bad you way, actually like being a loner or would you actually like that, but you just say that because you, for whatever you're reason, alone. haven't worked on yourself and now you refuse to look at why you're still a loner when he approaches... Was it the, the sociopath? I think it was, I guess. And he's trying to flirt with her. While that's going on, another woman had just jumped from three or four stories up. Oh, God. They're kind of just like, oh, maybe another time. I can't really hear you because this woman is screaming as she's dying, you know? Like, it does kind of make me think of how that kind of at, uh, environment of outside, there's suffering and there's homelessness or there's people yelling at each other or there's uh, accidents happening. And then inside, you know, people are like trying to date or they're at a club or they're trying to, you know, yeah. talk up someone or people yeah. are just having a delightful dinner and then there's like, a car crash or something people are like oh these things can be happening and then you can easily just kind of like switch back to like yes but my priority is meeting someone because that is the the rat race I'm, i find myself in right now you know for me it, it reminded me of how society kind of forces you to distort yourself i think a lot of people have had it this experience where you're in a group of people and some of them aren't the best people. Let's so, say, you know, one of the people there, oh, hey, how's it going, friend? And then the friend is not really nice to you, as nice as she usually is when you are alone. Right. Maybe is mean to you even mm. because she knows where she is. The people here are cool and right. we can't be like chummy. And also because like, you're not looking too good right now. And like all of these people, I don't want to associate with you. And mm. so I need to pander um, to the kind of behavior. And then they start kind of being mean or snooty or whatever. Mm. Or you see that the guy that you're interested in has a certain kind of personality and so then you also adjust yourself accordingly I yeah. don't know instead of like going over and helping that person out you know you're thinking oh no but I've committed to you know I need to seem cool in front of the sociopath yeah, so I can't exactly. be yeah. worried about that person yeah in pain especially in groups it's easier to lose yourself whoever people kind of sense is the most confident one or the, the leader. The leader of the pack, yeah. Um, makes me think of like when uh, my college days and apparently the year right before when I joined it seemed like generally the cool people of that year were all very kind of rude and mean and bullyish and that kind of thing. And yeah. so then everyone kind of tried to do that, but just didn't do it as well as the, the main yeah. honchos, yeah. right? Then my year, uh, at least as far as it seemed like some people were saying, and as far as I observed, the people that seemed to be whatever, the coolest or the people that as the others aspired to be more like were people that liked, were into comedy and bits and sketches and jokes and entertaining and humor and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So then everyone was trying, like, there, there were people that would come up to other people I knew in the program that were seen as as the cool ones and they would just try and make them laugh and there was like this thing where people would come up and they would try and make this person laugh and if they did you know they'd feel like hey i met that i made that person laugh you know yeah. it was very interesting so it's like they can switch from year to year of just like people seeing oh now these values are valued the way the, the world is set up is yeah. like every single time you're adapting mm -hmm. who do i have to be today mm -hmm. one thing that I, I thought about as well when you think about cancel culture i think i completely understand the reason cancel culture is so prevalent. There's a lot of people in the world who really care and want equity, equality, all the good stuff. But for me, I think this movie kind of says, well, yes, we understand that you want society to be good, but then you're orchestrating certain things like, okay, you can't say these words anymore. You can't go here anymore. These spaces have to be a certain way now. With our desire to create communities of understanding and empathy where people can move freely, really, I think it's primarily an altruistic desire, but sometimes we want it so much that we're willing to, to make the biggest sacrifices and we don't really realize how badly these are impacting us. For example, you know, there, there are still people living in the Amazon jungle yeah. somewhere. They see a trap, right? Like an animal footprint and they touch it and they're like, oh, this animal is actually limping yeah. on the left or side. Or the animal's pregnant or something. Or the animal or, is pregnant or yeah. they're injured. Yeah. Us 
orchestrating all yeah, the time. Yeah, it's becoming more and more intellect and we're losing sense yeah. of just like that, that yeah. connectedness and that biology. It's, exactly. That. So this movie, yeah. I was like, oh my God, is this where we're going? Because if you are orchestrating all the time, you're arresting people's development effectively. Yeah. So you're not having human beings anymore who are organically growing. I think that's why in the movie, they're all so robotic. A basketball weighs between 550 and 650 grams. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. Yes. The weight's different for men's and women's games, but that's roughly how much it weighs. Do you know how much a volleyball weighs? No, but I'd like to find out. Because that's where people are reduced to at the end. Yeah, yeah. you're reduced to that. Yeah. Like, you're not a person anymore. We were talking before we started recording. I was saying, like, you know, it seems like people are taught a lot of good stuff. They just forget it. Look at the uh, intro to the original Arthur cartoon series. Yeah. One of the lyrics is, you know, everybody that you meet will have an original point of view. And, it's, and that's a good thing. Every day when you're walking down the street, everybody that you meet has an original point of view. <laughs> and I say, hey, hey, what a wonderful kind of day. If you could learn to work and play and get along with each other. But uh, I mean, I, I disagree, I think, when people feel that cancel culture is a new thing. I think it's always been a thing. Yeah. I think it's just before it was the church canceling Galileo. Galileo! 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 So canceling has always been a thing. Now I think it's just... I mean, I still think people in positions of power do canceling as well, but you have, you also have people on the internet that can also cancel. So I think that's why people just think it's a new thing. It's more, it's not that it's a new thing, it's just that there is more of it. Why is there more of it? Because you have people in power that have been canceling and always will cancel and have been doing so. And then you have actually, you can get people together a lot easier. So you'd say it's more democratic canceling. So you have two types of canceling now instead of just one. And I think that's why it feels like there's more of it going on. Yeah. But it's always been going on. I hear a lot of people online saying there's this new thing now where you just can't, like, it's, it's hard to express things. And why I think it's not necessarily a good idea to say this is a new thing, because then that people would say, oh, well, then we should, like, revert back to, I'm like, it's always been a thing. Yeah. Groups of people have always wanted their in-group beliefs to be a thing, and they're always kind of want to convert everyone else. Yeah. Like, it's fear that causes it. How do we get relieve everyone of that fear, you know, for people to feel comfortable just having everyone else disagree with them, right? Because people have been programmed over generations, thousands of years to feel the need to conform and fit in and feel safe that way. Yeah. How do you break people out of that? I think there's just about the same level of cancel. If anything, I would still argue actually that there's less canceling going on nowadays, only because it feels like there's more. But I actually feel like people generally are freer to express themselves than, than ever. Before 1960 or something, you could get arrested for just giving a pacifist speech. Eugene Debs, you know, is a politician in the States, got arrested just yeah. for having a speech that was against the war, World War One, or whatever. There's a lot more freedom now. You can make pacifist speeches now and not get arrested. But you just have more availability for people that disagree with you to point out they disagree with you. That's yeah. all I think that it really is. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's some stuff that we thought about the lobster and also some stuff that we just, I guess, thought about not even really related to the lobster, but we just thought about. So either way, let us know. Yeah. Let us know what you thought. Yeah. Have you seen it? <laughs> let us know as well in the comments. Yeah. And uh, okay. yeah. That's a lot share your thoughts and our thoughts on everything that we covered here today. Mm -hmm. But until next time, Bye. thanks for watching though. That's a wrap. I was wearing dark blue trousers and a tight cream blouse, and he took my clothes off and fucked me up the ass. And as he was fucking me, a thug came into the kitchen and took the steak knives from the second drawer and attacked us, stabbing the knives into our bellies one by one. I woke up terrified.